broadcast is live. Hi, Hi. I'm Maggie Woodley from Life at the Zoo and Red Head Art. I'm here with um, some other sciencey bloggers to discuss uh, science at home with you today. So science at home is all about making science with your kids easy. It's about having a go, about having fun, about exploring together, not always having all the answers, but sort of starting to nurture that interest in science and the world around us. So now that we're coming into the summer months, we thought it would be really fun to look at the weather. Uh, something that's always on everyone's minds, lots of sunshine, lots of rain, lots of wind, complain, complain, complain. So we thought let's do some science experiments around that. So you can already see my little one here. It's actually quite a simple childhood favorite, the pinwheel. Um, clearly it's there to show. There we go. Wind in action. Um, you know, you can talk to your children about how wind um, is also energy, how the energy is what turns the pinwheel round, and how um, as humans we've captured that energy in things like windmills or water wheel. Well, water wheels are a different thing, clearly, but it's the same principle, and uh, and used it um, to create energy that we can then use. Um, it's quite fun for us because we've actually got a windmill near us. Um, locally in a park and we've also got a water wheel near us so it sort of kind of opens up lots of discussion for us and that's what sort of science at home is all about is discussing exploring observing um, and seeing if you can find some answers so that's our very simple uh, wind measuring tool if you want um, I'm going to pass over now to Trisha who's got a very exciting experiment for us Hi, I'm Trisha from Inspiration Laboratories, and today I just want to show you a quick little way to make a cloud in a jar. So it's a fun way to see how a cloud is really working up in the atmosphere. Um, clouds part of the water cycle, so water vapor evaporates into the air, and then you the water will condense into a cloud, and then of course the cloud, when it gets enough water, will rain. Um, simple water cycle. So in a cloud actually needs something to condense upon in a surface water, sorry, to turn from uh, water vapor into liquid needs a surface to condense upon. And in an atmosphere that would be something like dust or sulfates, um, dirt, smog, air pollution, um, volcanic debris, or even salts and anything like that it would be able to condense upon. In the jar, I'm going to use um, some aerosol from air freshener. So we have here in the jar, this is just some warm, hot, actually it's really hot, it's pretty hot water, about 140 degrees um, Fahrenheit, and it is forming water vapor into the jar. Um, I want to make sure the jar is kind of, the condensation is down. Then I'm going to add some ice on top, so that's the other thing you need in the atmosphere. You'll have some cooling. Um, this down a little bit so you can see. And all it's doing right now is we're just trapping the water vapor into the jar. Yeah, you can see bouncing around on my table. And there's nothing really happening except for the water vapor. So we need to add the aerosol into it in order to have some a surface for the water vapor to condense on. I'm going to try to do this and spray it straight in so it doesn't get on the side. And we should be able to make a cloud. You see how it, the little wispies? Sorry, my son's bouncing the table, which is bouncing the camera. <laughs> there you go. And then we'll let the cloud trap a little bit, and then we can let it escape. And you can actually touch the cloud and see what it looks like. And there's the cloud in the jar. It comes out. Yep, and then it comes out. So I'm going to go ahead and pass on to Anthea. Thanks, Trisha. I love that cloud experiment. I'm definitely going to give that a go. Um, we're on holiday next week, hooray, so uh, we have no more school runs. So what we've decided to do is spend the week measuring the weather. Um, and we're going to measure the temperature, the wind direction, the pressure, and um, there's something, oh, and waterfall, there we go. Um, and hopefully we're going to see if we can kind of cut, find some similarities between which way the wind's blowing and how much rain we get, whether we have a sunny day and what the pressure's doing and see if my children can kind of see the relationship between how the four things come together. And what we've made is um, our own barometer. So this is a classic one using a glass jar a balloon on the top. I did this this morning and already the straw that's on the top, we've got a cloudy day. Well, actually, it's sunny at the moment. It's just starting to brighten up, but we've had a, a bit of a cloudy day, which is normally um, to do with low pressure. Um, and as a result, the uh, straw is pointing down at the moment. 
We've also got another barometer which we're going to do. We're going to see how the different barometers work and which one works the best. So this is um, water with a ruler stuck to the side of the glass jar and we've got a straw that's been sealed off at the top. Um, it's filled with water first, coloured water so you can see it. Let me lift that up. And then basically as the um, pressure goes up and down so the water in the straw should do the same thing. Um, and they tend to, to work in relation to the pressure. So basically the, the level will go up when there's high pressure and down when there's low pressure. This is another type that I've used using my um, winemaking brewers sump here and this will be slightly different. So because we've got low pressure the water will rise up um, and when the pressure is pushing down the water will then hopefully move back down and we'll see a, a change in the level here which I will mark up. Uh, to, make, to measure the wind, the direction, we're going to get an old plate, we're going to write north, south, east, west and stick this cork with a bit of glue on the top and basically, <laughs> hopefully, this very simple, made with a straw, a sewing pin and a couple of bits of card stuck in will tell us the direction that our lovely wind blows in and we live near the sea so we get some quite strong winds as well when it's uh, windy. The temperature, we'll just use a, a, thermometer, a thermometer and then we're just going to get a glass jar and a, a dipstick and we're going to dip the stick in and see whether we've got any moisture in there and hopefully by the end of next week we'll be able to tell you a little bit about our weather system around here. And I'm now going to pass to Keris. Hi, I'm Keris from Rainy Day Mum and I've got a toddler and a preschooler so we're making some very simple ways to observe and measure the weather. With young kids that's basically the science is at home and science that you can observe and look at and feel. So our first one is a very simple rain gauge. It was a plastic bottle which we've cut at the top, placed it in the top and then we could have marked off on the bottle measurements to record how much it rains, but we've actually created our own little weatherman here. It's a wooden spoon and my eldest used a tape measure to mark off centimetre increments along the handle of the spoon and because weathermen have strange hair, we've added some little hair to him so he can now go out and measure the weather. have, here we go, she's back on, so that means, carry on, back to you Karis. <laughs> okay, we've got um, two, uh, a little weather forecasting station here, we've got two pine cones, one that I've had indoors and you can see what a pine cone looks like in a dry atmosphere, all of the, um, it's all open and this would allow the seeds to easily disperse in the wind when it's dry. And then I've had one outside, and like Anthea, we've had a, a pretty dreary day with lots of rain, and you can see how it's closed up. Um, it's just starting to open because we've also got weather improving here. So it takes a little time, and you can sort of see and forecast what the weather is going to be doing in the next 12, 24 hours by looking at pine cones, and we keep them outside and inside so we can compare what it's going to do. Okay, I'm going to hand back to Maggie and I'll see you soon. Oh, I'm so excited. I want to do all these things now with the kids. I've always talked about doing a weather station and I've just never got round to it. So this is really sort of the incentive for us to have a go, especially um, as a summer holidays approach. I think it'd be really great um, and really interesting and a fun way to watch what's going on around us. Um, so anyway, thank you again, everyone, for coming. Thank you, everyone, for sharing your science ideas. Um, it's about exploring, taking a look and having fun. And I think that cloud is absolutely brilliant. Um, and everyone should have a go at that. So thank you very much, everybody, and see you again soon.